Hello, I'm Newbooger, and welcome to Newbooger Presents More Tips for Beginning Dungeon Masters. Let's get into this. So you finally made the leap. You're going to DM a game, but you don't know where to start. Well, in this video here, I'm going to give you some little tips on where to start and what to expect when you're a dungeon master. When you're starting off as a new dungeon master, it's really best to start with a module or a one shot. You don't want to go into a lavish pan of a big giant campaign and try to build a giant world with a giant map and a bunch of little cities. It's best off if you start with a module. A module is something that is sold by um, Wizards of the Coast. You can read the book. It gives you a bunch of little encounters, what the adventures are, what to throw into the adventures, traps in certain environments within that particular module or that campaign. One shots are also good. One shots is you as a dungeon master build an adventure around either a small city or a small town or even a dungeon crawl. This will also get your feet wet into actually building a more massive campaign. It will give you an opportunity to learn how to actually build encounters, how to build traps, uh, narrating NPCs, and so forth and so on. What you can also do with that at the same time is you can take your little one shots that you have and you can put them into campaigns. Say you build a little town or you build a city. You can take that city, place it on your world map, and boom, you got yourself a little small adventure for a campaign. Maybe a side quest. Maybe it could be a part of the overarching campaign. The point is, is that you want to start off small. You don't want to go big and go into a campaign and try to build it. Trust me, I know. I've done it. It's a lot harder than you think. So my advice to you is either go purchase a small module or maybe just build yourself a little one shot from a world that's already been created or from your own world or some imaginary city that you have in your head. As you're starting to get into modules and as you're starting to get into more bigger overarching campaigns or even uh, you know one shots that turn into two three or four shots take it offline what does that mean using Google Docs or forms is a perfect way to take it offline when you're in the middle of a quest or you're in the middle of adventuring what can happen is you get to a point where it's a long rest you can take those into Google Docs or maybe uh, you have the situation where someone wants to go through the city and go shopping and you're right at the end of that session you can actually take that shopping experience, move it into a Google Doc or a forum, and these people can work on it on their own. Taking it offline allows you to get rid of some of that clutter that happens within a campaign and move it over into a Google Doc so that way the session itself can continue. But yet they still get their personal stories or they get their one-on-one -on -one events with NPCs or even other PCs. It's a good way to make sure that your game stays flowing straight through instead of having to stop and engage in little moments. Do your best as a dungeon master to make sure the entire group is engaged in that session. This is where taking it offline can come in handy because what happens is, is when you get into that one-on-one -on -one session with an NPC, there's three other players that are sitting there doing nothing. So trying to make sure that everything that stays within a session is engaging to all the players instead of just one or two players is can be extremely difficult as a dungeon master. A lot of the time what I recommend is if you're in the mid, mid of a session and people want to go shopping, try not to spend too much time on one player. Try to make sure that you're only spending 10, 15 minutes maybe per player and that way that every single player gets their moment whether it's 15 minutes while they're engaging with this NPC or it's 15 minutes to go buy some armor or magical weapons maybe potions or ashes do your best as a dungeon master to kind of time yourself to make sure that every player is engaged throughout that session be 
Being careful with traps and random encounters is crucial to dungeon mastering. It's always fun to have traps. When people are going through dungeon crawls or they're going into a dungeon or anything like that, you they're always trapped. Try not to be so much to the point of taking HP from your players as you're trying to set up these traps. What can happen is, is if you set up way too many traps within this dungeon and nobody can solve the riddles or the traps or depending on whatever you have set up, you're just taking from their HP or you're taking from their healing items or you're taking from their spell slots. That can make for the big bad encounter or even their next small encounter to be almost impossible to complete. You have to be careful with the traps. I personally like to do uh, effects instead of, you know, taking from their HP. Maybe when they go to open up the chest and that rogue goes and tries to unlock it and the trap goes off, maybe instead they're hit with the spell and all of a sudden their body tenses up and slows down and now they're slowed for the next hour. Maybe uh, when the trap goes off, instead of it exploding in their face with a fireball, and instead a vial breaks of acid and destroys whatever contents was within that chest. Be careful. Now I'm not saying that it's not important to have traps and locked doors because you want that rogue or even sometimes that ranger to feel as though their abilities are important. All I'm saying is try to limit them to the best of your ability so that way moving forward they don't get overwhelmed and hit too hard and all of a sudden they have zero HP to go into the battle. That goes the same for random encounters. What are random encounters? As the party is traveling sometimes you like to throw in some goblins that go and attack the party and then they travel again and more goblins come out and then they travel again and more goblins come out do you see the problem the point of small and random encounters is to give them the sense that the world does in itself have other creatures within the environments but you don't want to overburden your party with random encounters random encounters are fun it breaks up the monotony of travel and it is a way to break up that monotony because travel can be a pain sometimes the point is is Try to spread out your random encounters as much as you can, or even going through dungeons. You want to try to spread out those random encounters so that way it's more engaging and more fun for the players as it's not happening all the time. Dungeons and Dragons is not just about fighting, it's not just about the battles. Sometimes Dungeons and Dragons is about traveling, engaging NPCs, engaging the big bads, PC to PC confrontations and arguments backstory reveals sometimes having random encounters is not the end all be all so be careful with it try to spread it out a little bit at lower levels it's best to be mindful of the cr rating now don't get me wrong cr rating is not the end all be all what does that mean well you know sometimes as a dungeon master we like to look through our little monster manual and find a monster that we want our players to fight well sometimes we find a monster that might be a cr rating of uh six or seven and our party is only a third level party being mindful of the cr rating just means at lower levels when our players are engaged with monsters we have a general idea on how hard that encounter could be be mindful of it because sometimes you will run into a situation where the CR rating monster that is a CR 3 can TPK your level 3 party or even a 2 or a 1. Be mindful of it, read the stats, make sure you're engaged in the stat blocks itself. If you look at a monster and it, it seems like it might be a little too powerful for the party, maybe dub down some of their special attacks. Maybe they can't do a certain special ability and stuff like that. I'll go over a little bit more about CR ratings and monsters and encounters uh, in a, another video. But uh, for now, just be mindful of it. Make sure you're reading the monsters. Uh, make sure you're reading the monsters as far as some might have pack tactics and certain other abilities like that. So just be mindful of it. Make sure you're reading the monsters and make sure that they fit in your campaign and with your your current players levels 
Thank you all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you found these tips to kind of be helpful for you as a dungeon master, please go ahead and give that thing a like. Uh, I really appreciate it if you could. Um, if you do like the content and you want to see more of uh, uh, my content and more tips and tricks, maybe some playthroughs that I do, please go ahead and hit the subscribe and notification bell. I would also really appreciate it if you uh, go ahead and put some comments down below. Let me know if there's anything that you would particularly like me to cover. I'd be happy to do so. Um, again, thank you all so, so much for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next video.